thousands of people have descended on the US Capitol to recreate a seminal moment in the civil rights movement 50 years ago, the March on Washington, led by Dr. Martin Luther King, where he gave his I Have a Dream speech. Today's civil rights campaign has organized the march to celebrate the anniversary and to continue the struggle for racial equality in the US. To coincide with the anniversary, a new film has been released based on the true life story of a black man in the White House, but it's not Barack Obama. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Miller, reports now from Washington. In downtown DC, there's a big house built mostly by slaves more than 200 years ago. Today, a black president lives in the White House. But for nearly four decades, another African-American man worked in this building, during which time America changed. Eugene Allen served eight US presidents, from Truman to Reagan, as White House butler. His life story stretched from segregation to Obama's inauguration, marked along the way by milestones in modern American history. Now, it's inspired a star-studded Hollywood blockbuster. I'm a new butler. You hear nothing, you see nothing. You only serve. The names have been changed and Hollywood plays fast and loose with Eugene Allen's true life story, but this sweeping historical drama set against the turbulent backdrop of the civil rights struggle tackles the issue of racial equality head on. It's also the story about a relationship between father and son, a father who is passive and gentle, but whose indignation gathers force, and his son impatient for change. Get the hell out of my house! What are you no, doing? No, 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 Get all out! Now everybody just... Sorry, Mr. Butler, I didn't mean to make fun of your hero. Everything you are and everything you have is because of that butler. A lot has changed in 50 years, and then in some ways nothing has changed. Charles Allen, Vietnam vet, and the butler's real-life son, loved his dad, and despite all the Hollywood license, loves the movie too. <laughs> his life went from plantation house Negro, as it's yes, called, and then yes. right the way through. Right the way through. To seeing a black man in the White House. What an extraordinary period through which to live. One minute, you know, you're a little boy on a plantation, and he said the next minute you're standing in a room with kings and queens. But as he poured tea for presidents and Mississippi burned, the butler kept his counsel. No room for politics at the White House. We had gone through that whole thing of, of watching, you know, little girls being murdered in Birmingham. And then when I was in Vietnam, you know, Martin Luther King got killed, uh, Bobby Kennedy was killed. And so by the time I got home, you know, I was, you know, I was really feeling kind of bitter. And, and, you know, like I said, my father being a, a very peaceful man, you know, he would have wanted to stay in a non-violent mode. That was just his nature. And uh, I was leaning the other way. By the time he voted for Barack Obama, Eugene Allen was long retired. 45 years had elapsed since he'd bumped into Martin Luther King in the White House after his I Have a Dream speech. Tell me what, what his reaction was when a black man entered the White House as president. We went to the inauguration where he said you couldn't even dream that it was a dream. You see Barack walking out to the podium, you know, to be uh, inaugurated as president. And it was just the look that he gave me, which, you know, I just can't put into words. And he said, yes, it's really going to happen. It's really going to happen. Eugene Allen hadn't dared to dream Martin Luther King's dream, but in some ways he lived it. He died 13 months into Obama's first term, 90 years on from his birth on a southern plantation.